Ready? Titties. I love this. I love using the light bars as the cab lights. And yes, they do have the E stamp, so they are legal on a truck in BC. I don't know about the rules anywhere else, but they're legal in BC to have these like this. Probably legal. Uh, good morning, can I please have a box of coffee? And can I have eight sausage and eggers? Coffee for the crew here, just picked it up for the boys. We got coffee and breakfast sandwiches. That's sponsored directly from you guys through the merch store, coffee for the crew. It takes more, usually two or three coffee for the crews just to be able to do it once. So thank you very much guys, we appreciate it. Big thanks to everyone who supports our merch store. All your orders are going out right now. There's a sale happening, but it's 15% off for this week. It's easily taking up three days of time now. Three days, we find out whether we get a yes or no on whether we can get a manufacturer plate. Mm -hmm. You ship the things that a manufacturer plate let you do. You're allowed to drive your vehicle whatever you want for testing. Um, you want to take it to a different shop, you don't need it in transit, you just put your manufacturer plate. Like if you need to take it to an Upfitters or someone that does body rig outs, crane trucks, whatever, you just put your manufacturer plate on it. So we're going to wait and see if ICBC says we're a manufacturer or not. What? Talking about a manufacturing plate? Oh, that's fine to have on camera. Yeah, I was going to shut it off, so we're not using all the data. That's actually kind of a little background, I guess. Right, yeah, yeah, again, yeah. The manu if we're trying to get a manufacturing plates, you can take it to, like, say someone wants to put a concrete mixer on it, you can take it over, drive it over to there, you just put your manufacturing plate on it, drive it over to the mixer place, Say it's got to go in for an inspection, you just put your manufacturing plate on it, a customer buys a truck and we deliver it to them, just put a manufacturing plate on it. Yeah, it's so that you can also test it, like we can do with a manufacturing plate, we can do our testing, our road test, put it on a trailer on, drive it with a trailer, but we need the government to say that we're actually a manufacturer in order to do it, which we have. We have built and manufactured a truck, so hopefully the government will let us test it as a manufacturer. If not, we got to go through the full inspection process before we even drive the truck on the road. We need to have it inspected, and then we're allowed to drive it, which is, I could see being fair too. Hey, you should probably make sure the truck has the safety before you test it, but normally manufacturers can self-certify for their testing. That way you can get actually get all the testing data you need and then go through all the inspection, one or the two, or at least you can drive to the inspection facility. Oh, we're Zoom calling on the phone. There we go. Okay. Meeting started. So how's things going? Pretty good, pretty good. Boys are working their foot off. Um Shh. The power went out. We just lost the power. Oh, oh no. Uh, to the whole house. Uh so we're having a Zoom meeting with Flodrolic in regards to uh, going out there to witness the product testing the axles and uh, now we have no power power goes out of the house oh boy oh we're back okay Let's try this again and it's off again i'm picturing this as you like trying to uh record blue collar interviews to yeah. people difficulties yeah i know this is 100 percent blue collar interviews stuff we'll just have the meeting while i'm on the phone i'll just, I'll just give my call Hey, we totally lost power at the house. Total power outage. Oh, no. It's been su it's been super windy here today. Like just blowing wind, and yeah, no, we've lost all our power. Any luck? We'll be turning axles tomorrow and finalizing all our tests in Wednesday. I was hoping nice. to invite you to come down Thursday for some factory acceptance testing. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. If we're ready for that, uh, I'm gonna send Theron off, and he can come out and check it all out and. I'll be a little busy in the shop, but... What, are you building a truck or something? <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Fair enough. I can't wait to have them for sure. We'll show them everything that's going on, and um, once we get this thing packaged up and shipped off, we'll be sending a whole bunch of Flojolic people to hang out with you to turn this thing on and make sure she's working. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds good. What kind of, like, itinerary are we going to have for when I'm down there? Fly-in Wednesday... 
uh, be around the sh oh you said Thursday Wednesday film Thursday fly out late Thursday night or Friday morning is that, I guess is, yeah dude, generally just to, to, to be clear like we need every minute we can with this thing um, so it's going to be really important to be as minimally impacting testing as possible but I mean it's, it's early mornings for you but I mean that's personally how I fly when I'm doing this stuff I like get in get out and just get up early so if, you, if you're willing to do that I think it'll work well yeah, I was a logger for over 10 years, so I usually started at, like, midnight or, or less. <laughs> You'd probably be okay with a, a 6 a.m. flight. Yeah. Make sure you know to stay out of your way while your work guys are working on it. Yeah, you bet. You know, these timelines are wild, right? Uh, Steve Steve has permission to tell Theron to fuck off, so. Yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time I've been told that either, so. Thank you. <laughs> See you soon. Yeah. See you soon. Bye. Bye. One thing after another. What's going on here with this focus? So Theo, you know, today what we got done is we got the cab mounted on. We have hood. the hood. Thank you. Hood mounted on. We have two 5/8 bolts on all four corners of the hood. We got an eighth-inch rubber. Ice, nice little bit of isolation. Keep the vibrations down. We got the radiator mounted it in. It's all bolted nice and tight. Yeah. So to do the radiator, we had to. Uh take a piece of pipe in an old socket and, you know, customize. As well as we had to make rubber chunks so we could insulate the bottom skid plate. That, uh, there's four bolts going up and hanging onto the suspension bracket, so the bumper is mounted to the frame rail, the skid plate is connected to the suspension. And we took those eighth yeah. chunks of rubbers there and just kind of torched them all together. We got the air filter coming soon. It's just on its way from Minnesota and that's gonna hang right up in Above here, obviously we gotta keep the oil cap free. But it's a big sucker. It's uh it's good for about twelve hundred cubic feet a minute. And then when it's plugged it's uh seven eighty. Our motor runs about nine hundred cubic feet a minute. That's what it's rated for, so we're well within the specs. Even plugged, I mean it'll choke the motor a little bit, but it's a little more coal. Not not much. Took a little bit to make sure that the uh that the hood here was square. With the bumper because when you look at this thing you want to have it 100% square look we have our slopes slightly tilted down on the front that way when you're in the cab and you don't have to uh, take up from the interference so we have a little bit more visibility in the front next step is getting the uh, wings the butterflies the Dean has this set up yeah we just need the grill mash and then we get the grill guard and yeah, yeah it's, uh, yeah. it's coming along. And that's what Dean's working with over there? Uh, Dean's making the uh, mounts brackets. for the battery box. Oh. He's got everything painted right now. He's making the airbag mounts for the battery boxes, so the batteries are going to be able to flow with the frame rails. Yeah, or separately from them. Separately. They're, the ones in the middle of the frame rails are going to be completely isolated on airbags. Do you want to take a look at the wiring? Let's see this. Oh, yeah, so we've been working on the loom all day. Um, Miles ahead of where it was before, literally before, like wire was drooping over and like everywhere just to test. So now looming means that we're like tucking everything up and strapping it in. So this is Gabe, he's doing up some loom uh, as well as just buck connections and stuff. We wanna make sure too, uh, we have enough slack in the cable. So every you have to do maintenance on it, there's like a huge chunk of cable for you to be able to splice into. That was and, my mandate. Yes. Yeah, Chase made me work on that all day. <laughs> well, I'm like, yeah. I hate it when manufacturers leave you just enough cable and if you need to splice or change a fuse and you have to splice anything, you're like, oh, now it's too short. I'm like, why don't you just leave an extra few inches that so I can put a couple more buckets. Yeah, that looks yeah. Oh, so yeah. Okay, yeah, that's right. That's right there. Oh yeah, yeah. geez, you left like yeah. a foot of extra cable. I know, right? Well, it'll be enough. Yeah, it'll be enough. It'll look pretty too. And this looks way nicer with that loom. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the, the loom is a different type of loom uh, than traditional automotive. So it's not plastic ribbed for your pleasure. It's actually more like skate, snake skin. So it's kind of like um, well, I, a I Chinese did, finger trap. You know? yeah, yeah, I did not want the normal plastic loom because that plastic loom you can hear scraping. Mm -hmm. er, 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 er. And I'm like, okay, this one is, it's a little bit thicker. It's a little bit more durable. It's a little bit more expensive, but it, it's gonna be a. It's quieter. It's more durable. It's just good. It's a better product for more money. Yeah. Although if it's actually the, the price point's not bad. It's just you can't buy it a crappy tire. Oh, That's no. about it. It's not. It's not as common. But it's a nice product. It looks really good. It's only. Yeah. It's a, a 
25% more. It it's wasn't made of nylon. More. It actually kind of has a carbon fiber thing going on. So it's pretty good. So, And then what's cool too, we took measurements today um, and I have ordered them. We're going to put six solar panels now on the truck. A four will go on the hood, on the butterfly. And then I have room for two panels up top for solar panels. That so way, that means, yeah. yeah. Literally, so, this is yeah. kind of exciting. If you park your truck... Over a weekend or whatever, it'll keep all your 12 volt, 24 volt batteries all charged up. It'll keep the batteries charged. So if you park her over the weekend or over a week, the solar will just maintain the truck systems and keep everything going. So you park the truck, you walk away for two weeks, the truck systems can maintain itself just off the solar. And I thought yeah. that was kind of a neat little bonus. And it'll shut up all the people who be like, why didn't you put solar on the truck? I'm fine, we did. <laughs> so many people on Carl's like, why didn't you put solar on it? I'm like, oh. Because it's a classic truck, so solar panels are kind of ugly, but then he found some really nice looking flexible solar matting. Yep. and it, They're three millimeters thick and they're black. You, know, you can't beat that. Yeah, they look pretty sexy. Yeah, so I can't really get my hands on them. So yeah, yeah, it's going to be another day of bloom, but ideally at the end we'll be able to take some nice shots in here, see how the driver will feel. Uh, looking forward to some comments and, and maybe some suggestions on how I can make it look even better. Because right now I have zip ties being used in strategic locations, but it'd be really cool to see how I could do that better and refine it before the show. Yeah. The good news is everything works, right? You gotta start with a circuit that's like not loomed and then afterwards you can make it look pretty. So at least we're at that step. So the other exciting part is we got these battery boxes made and one on top of the other. Here, we're gonna grab this side and show it. And so basically what happens is you drop your battery in, goes into this enclosure, uh, put the other one on, top plate. These are going to protect the batteries with some actual reinforcement. These then slot down into the frame rails in these, these cradle of frame rails. Well, that's not how low they are, we just cut them much longer than we needed because it's easier to make something longer and cut it to length. But, and then from there, what we're going to do is, there was some airbags around here somewhere, I've been in the office all day. So from here, the uh, patented Edison airbag mount. <laughs> literally, literally, we've got a patent on this one. What happens is, airbag goes onto here, onto this rail. This battery is going to have a plate that comes out. Two batteries, one, two, or one, two on the other way. Rides on the air ride. That way, the batteries are totally isolated from the frame. So if you get any frame twist, you get uneven ground, these batteries aren't going to be taking the shocks. So they got airbags, a set of shocks to absorb the cushion, and this is just going to give these lithium batteries a nice smooth ride going down the highway. Take them away from any kind of frame torque. The bag will take up that, a little torsion arm, a little shock, but that is going to give these batteries the nicest ride off highway. So that's kind of what we've done, and as far as I know, we are the only EV manufacturer to put their trucks, batteries on air ride. Like, think about it. Suspension's on air. Not on ours, but on normally. Uh, cab is on air. Steer bag. Like, you put air bags on it to smooth it out. Everyone's worried about their, oh, trucks are going to be rough. They're going to shake a battery. Yeah, we'll put the batteries on airbags like you do everything else. I don't think this would have to be, you don't have to be a head scientist at NASA to figure that one out. But yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. That's how we're going to protect the batteries. When the batteries are up and in here, this frame rail is going to protect it. We got thick skid plating along the bottom, so if you run over anything, you're going to bounce that skid plating off. And what was your dad working on over there? Uh, my dad today is working on these low bed rails. They're uh, just a, the rear plate that bolts onto the back of the truck. And we made it, instead of just weld on, we made it boltable so we could change it out if we need to change out our application. But this is so when you got a short Jeep for a long log setup, you can slide the Jeep up. It's not a full set of low bed rails like you would have if you got a long Jeep, but I don't have any long Jeeps. So for the sake of this truck, we can slide the short Jeep up, pack the Jeep, put your trailer up, then lift it up, line it to kingpin height, slide it in. I really like having low bed rails on the truck. It makes the job a lot easier too. Even if you pin onto a dry van, you don't have to lift the landing legs all the way. Someone leaves the trailer a little short, you just slam it into the low bed rail, slam it onto the truck. When you drop your trailer, you don't have to lower the landing legs. You just let them slide down the rail, pick them up off the rail. Well, yeah, while I was dealing with issues upon issues, the guys are still getting it done in the shop today. Once the hood's mounted, we can start putting all the fender, the, uh, sorry, the side panels on the hood, the butterfly panels on the hood. Start, I really want over the next two weeks, I want to have these batteries ready to go mounted in the next two weeks because in a roughly about two weeks, the headache rack will be here. So I want the batteries all ready to go. 
Flow Drawlock will be sending out their engineers guys here in um, uh, roughly about three weeks. The Flow Drawlock engineers will be here. So two weeks we receive the headache rack. So we need to have the battery boxes and the side boxes on so that we can and the cab fully mounted so that we can install the headache rack. Once we have one week to install the headache rack, once it gets here, which shouldn't be too much of a problem, because the flow hydraulic guys for the last three weeks of August are going to need the batteries, the headache rack, everything there so that they can run all the high voltage line, which means we also got to get the airline set. So we've got three weeks to do batteries, airlines, other things like hood panels. We can leave that till later. But at least we got the hood mounted and all ready to go. That was a big one. All right, I wanted to thank everyone that's been supporting us. We don't have large corporate sponsors. It's really the fans who sponsor us. So rather than doing an announcement for Grammarly at the video, we're going to thank the people that actually support us. First off, I want to thank Brian Fleming out of Berriham, Birama, North, North, Northern, Northwest Territories. Berriham, Northwest Territories. Thank you. Great on. Yeah, yeah, we want to thank uh, Luke Towers from Regina, Saskatchewan. Uh, Richard Hemquist from St. Albert, Alberta. I got Ken Clausen from Maple Ridge, BC. Oh, nice. Oh, you don't have a list. <laughs> no, I thought Zach said. He's just sitting here out another list. We should say <laughs> quick, <laughs> the, these thank yous that we're doing right now, it's just for people that have donated to us for beers for the boys, coffee for the crew, support our YouTube, and there's been some uh, YouTube supers and things, so it's just money that uh, helps us buy things like the beer, the coffee, the pizza. Well, we're doing all these long hours. We're doing 16-hour days. We have one month to get this truck ready for the show. We're doing long days, so at the end of a long day, we're having a little lunch for pizza here. Have a little supper, then we can hit up the truck for another few hours. And... But yeah, I want to thank Dustin Koffel out of Mound City, KS, Kansas. Right on. I want to thank uh, Rob Barr from Black Falls, Alberta. Joshua Smith from Lufkin, Texas. And Triff Dolbier from LaCroix, Wisconsin. Aaron Lada from New Ulm, Montana. I want to thank uh, Daryl. Burling from Sundry, Alberta. Joseph Soto from El Paso, Texas. Nice. Right off. Kent uh, Brower from Belleville, Wisconsin. Howard Kettner from Kelowna, BC, a local boy. Yeah, right off. Oh, he's local. <laughs> Feel free to swing by here, Howard. Yeah. Check it out. We always love people that bring beer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank uh, Thomas Weber from Lansing, Iowa. I believe it's Iowa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iowa. Okay, right on. Indiana? Oh, no, I mean, I -N is, is IN is Indiana. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Iowa. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Corey Domes from Lloyd Minister, Saskatchewan. Thank you. Nice. Uh, Charles Lazenby from Duncan, BC. Nice. Uh, Stan Hood from Wainwright, Alberta. Thanks, Stan. I want to thank uh, Tucker McNeil from Stetler, Alberta. Thanks, bud. Stetler. Paul Lively from Hope. British Columbia. Nice. nice. Local Thanks, boy. Yeah. James Ford from Shelton, Washington. Joshua Murphy from Overland Park, Kansas. I want to thank uh, Wes Sheedman, or Scheidman from Leduc, Alberta. Hope I said your name right there. Nick Jordan from Lockport, New York. Thank you. And Russell Early from Elda, Ohio. Tim Hughes Stainer from Ontario. I want to thank uh, Jared Newman from Squamish, BC. Thanks, buddy. Okay. Isaac Pine from Victoria, BC. William Stock from Georgetown, Texas. Ooh. All right. I think uh, Grant uh, Lukonsky or Lukonsky from Olympia, Washington. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Grand Roofing. It doesn't say where Grand Roofing is, but we're Grand Sweet. Roofing. It's the sponsor. Thank you. <laughs> nice. And I want to thank David Avonsearch for Avon Wrench from Ottawa, Ohio. Thanks, buddy. Nathan uh, Krantz and Cat's Ass Jerky who sent us a big thing of jerky. So that's what yeah. you do, because that keeps people going. Uh, yeah, like I said, that's that's our sponsor list. We don't have Grammarly uh, or anything like that, because honestly, screw the big corporate sponsors. Uh, I've got to thank you guys for really helping us out here. And uh, yeah. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Woo.